Skarmory absorbs the close combat that lands some heavy neutral damage and out comes Guzzlord. With only one protect shield to hide behind and we are full sending the Brave Bird does the opponent respect the damage. Welcome back to the channel. My goodness, do we have a treat for you all today. As recently I received mail from the trainer known as Turbo T612. This highly talented battler has an insane shadow roster. We've featured him numerous times in the past. His bought are showcases such as Polyrath, Typhlosion and Arcanine, fully maxed out in the Master League Premier Cup. Today, he's out there flexing his Ultra League roster with an OP core that's been around since the start of time that unfortunately is about to receive a big nerf. The core in question, of course, is going to be Skarmory and the Mudpoy. All the way since pre-season, this has been a staple on so many people's teams as these two cover each other near perfectly. Back in the early seasons, it was of course Skarmory plus Swampert or Wishcash. Recently, Quagsire stole the spotlight as the best mud boy. And if you didn't know, this core is not only phenomenal in the Great League, it's phenomenal in the Ultra League as well. Without any further ado, let's get into the battle. And in game one, we'll lead our Shiny Dragonite into Typhlosion, a very nice lead for us. As the oppressive incinerate damage is resisted and our Dragon Breath going to tear through the HP bar. We shield up the Thunder Punch return fire with the Dragon Claw, forcing our Protect Shield back. Turbo then pivots into Quagsire, looking to catch the next Thunder Punch where it is going to be single resisted. The opponent opts to stay in, looking to rebank a Thunder Punch, and that is quite a bold play, because if we was on Legacy Aquatel, we would have been able to fire it off before the second Incinerate finished, meaning they would have lost all that energy or been forced to go down to Protect Shield. We then pivot into Cresselia. Quagsire might be well below the CP limit, but is able to get Cresselia down below half health. We see the instant no shield deployed. Grass knot, double super effective, easily secures the knockout, but Turbo is able to send out the Mud Boys partner in crime, Skarmory. Mud Boys are pretty dreadful into Cresselia, but Skarmory completely walls this thing, unless on the off chance they're running Aurora Beam. However, I doubt it as Aurora Beam is one of the worst moves in the game. Turbo, anticipating Typhlosion, re-entering the battlefield, pivoted out into Dragonite. However, the opponent temporarily sent out Greninja before re-switching out into Typhlosion. They burn the final Protect Shield, and that is very much going to seal their fate. Greninja, very much a glass cannon, and it now has no Protect Shield to hide behind, and we're running that Hail Mary Brave Bird. It's going to be high Greninja, by Greninja, and we're going to be off to our 1-0 start. GG's, and thanks for playing. Heading into the next battle. We see Shadow on Shadow Crime, Dragonite into Gator, the opponent's like no thank you, and say switch into Giratina. Turbo banks some energy and catches the Dragon Claw onto Skarmory where it is going to be resisted. The opponent can hit us for neutral with either Shadow Sneak or Ancient Power. Let's see what their second move is. They could of course hit us for neutral as well with Shadow Force, but that costs 90 energy and Giratina takes around 12 years to get there. Or actually, ironically, 12 Shadow Claws for the first and 11 for the second. This Giratina's second move is the Ancient Power. However, as they didn't boost, Turbo easily going to be able to survive the next one and commit to the Steel Wing farm down. We see very high gameplay IQ. Turbo stopped attacking intentionally, allowing minimal farm for whatever comes out. Out comes Skeleturge. We force the opponent's first Protect Shield with the Brave Bird and out comes Quagsire. The opponent tries their luck, making a catch, but Turbo like, nah, nah, nah. Not today, Trainer. Banks his energy, sends out Dragonite. Dragonite fires off the Dragon Claw, forcing the opponent's final Protect Shield. We are going to see Turbo invest his first protection here, blocking up the incoming Hydro Cannon. He already knows as soon as this Gator is removed from the field of play, Skeleturge is going to be at the mercy of Shadow Quagsire. Back out comes Skeleturge. The opponent opts to dump energy, and we're going to see the instant no shield deployed. Quagsire easily has the game wrapped up from here. Back out comes the Quagman. We fire off two mud shots and the mud bomb for optimal fast move timing. Mud bomb isn't quite lethal, but Turbo can easily shield up whatever the opponent throws. They full send the Shadow Ball. Even a Shadow Ball wouldn't have knocked out from their Quagsire. Despite being around 2300 CP, pretty tick. We fire off the BM Stone Edge and we take that game. In the next battle, we see Dragonite into Polyrath. Despite us being a flyer and then being a fighter, Polyrath certainly has play here as they've got access to Icy Wind and even Ice Punch. I've actually run Ice Punch personally in a limited meta recently and my god, did it catch my opponent sleeping as it only takes six counters to the first as opposed to seven required for the Icy Wind. We exchange Protect Shield, out comes Ampros. We're going to see Turbo make a very nice catch onto Quagsire, although that is quite high risk, high reward. As if we didn't catch that move, the opponent has got access to Trailblaze, although this opponent evidently doesn't have it as I don't farm up to it the second time. 
Shadow Quagman showing very respectable bulk, even in the big boy league, able to tank both Brutal Swings Turbo, then heavily over farm to full fire off Mod Bomb, removing Amphros from the field of play, and out comes Gator. What else was you expecting in the back? My god, Gator is on so many teams, and I think it gets even better next season. Although, as my thoughts are wandering, look at this Quagman go! Quagsire able to fire off double mud bombs, getting Gator into the red. We then go for the wham, bam, combo play, try and snipe with the Dragon Claw, forcing the opponent's final protect shield. I'm anticipating a no shield here, but Turbo actually correctly shields up the Ice Beam, knowing Dragonite has enough in the tank to close out this battle. I really just wanted to see the no shield, and I wanted to see Polyrath get Brave Birded, but it isn't meant to be. Regardless of what Turbo does, he's going to be able to take this game. And unfortunately, Skarmory doesn't even enter the arena, heading into the next battle. Another fighter in the lead and another fighting type with that ice punch coverage. Although the opponent makes it very apparent they don't have it as they instantly pivot into Gator. I'll be honest, this matchup isn't much better for them. I just look at this Dragon Breath damage. The opponent goes to the obvious Hydro Cannon looking to get off some chip damage. But Turbo looking to keep his Dragonite healthy, invests the Protect Shield, gets his shield back and then out comes the Quagman. We already seen in the previous battle that Mod Bomb does around 35-40%, so the Dragon Earth damage certainly puts them into Mod Bomb range. Turbo tank the Hydro Cannon return fire with the Mod Bomb. Down goes Gator and out comes Tangrove. Holy crap, that is a spicy pick. Seeing Tangrove's got me thinking. Of course, when Niantic do move rebalances, they have specific Pokemon in mind. Rockside's nerfed, of course, because Dunsparce next season would be pretty OP if Rockside was still a good move. And of course, Vigoroth's just fucking annoying. So Rockside, of course, does need a little nerf. But what actually happens is other mom with access to that move become completely unplayable. And Tangrowth is a prime example of this. Way back in the day, Rockside's actually been nerfed twice now. Was able to one-shot Charizard. It now isn't going to be able to do anywhere near that damage and essentially becomes nothing more than a roster pick. You might be gone, buddy, but you are not forgotten. Another example of Niantic have nerfed a specific Pokemon. Yes, Steelix, I'm talking about you. Breaking swipe. Niantic gave it this move. Steelix has become far too powerful. Rather than removing the move from Steelix, they just nerfed it. So other mom have access to it. Stuff like Heliolisk and Haxorus has become so much less playable. Oh man, it hurts. I wish Niantic were hiring. Give me a job and I will sort this game out. I managed to do very little commentary in that battle and just went off on a mad pokey AK tangent. But let's try and do some commentary in the next battle. We see Dragonite into Excadrill. If this shiny Dragonite was on the recommended moveset of Dragon Claw and Superpower, that Superpower would have the ability to one-shot the opponent, of course. We're not running it, but the opponent doesn't know that. So you always got to fake it till you make it. So what I mean by that is at least farm up to the energy of Superpower, which would be 14 Dragon Breaths before unleashing a charge move. Turbo does that, but the opponent shows huge cojones, calling the bait. But undeterred, Turbo then catches the rock side onto Quagsire and out comes Gator. It's very nice to bait this thing out as Skarmory doesn't do particularly well into it, especially with shields up. Although speaking of which, we managed to force the first protect shield with the mud bomb. Turbo says, Quagman, thank you very much for your contribution. Alexa let it go down. And of course, we're going to send back out Dragonite and start tearing through this thing with our oppressive Dragon Breath damage. Turbo fires off the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw goes unshielded. Tough decision to make. Turbo, last second, invest in protect shield, blocking up the crunch, not a bad shield, and he's able to get the full Dragon Breath farm down. Opponent sends back out Exodrill, which is a huge mistake, as all that did was give us even more farm. Out comes Muck. Oh, man. I really wanted to see the Hyper Beam land. Turbo doesn't throw the Hyper Beam, banks a boatload of energy, and sends out Skarmory. Interesting quick move choice from the opponent, running Snarl. Snarl was the preferred moveset, probably about season 10 and prior, but since Poison Jab got a buff, almost all marks are on that moveset. We forced the final protect shield with the Sky Attack. The opponent is going to get the full Snarl farm down. We've got the charge move bank. Dragonite with the higher attack stat is going to be able to take this game, but I'm so, so sad we didn't see the beam thrown. GG's. And that is going to wrap things up for set number one. With Turbo T, a 6-1-2, going a perfect 5-0. Heading into the next battle, we see the mirror lead. I personally think you can play this one of three ways. You can fire off the Dragon Claw immediately, hoping you win CMP. You can go for the one shield, farm down, or you can look to catch one of your back two Pokemon. Turbo went for the move, winning lead, and out comes the Steel Penguin. So of course we're going to answer with a Quagman. The opponent tries their luck, catching the Mud Bomb onto Clefable, and this looks like RPS for the win. No matter what this Clefable is running, they can only hit us for resisted, and these Steel Wings are tearing through the HP bar. Clefable actually pretty bulky as well. Expect to see a rise in Clefables next season, due to it gaining access to Swift. 
the opponent doing their best, playing it out. I can already see the writing on the wall. Shout out Holmes Ice Henry for that quote. Empoleon opts to dump energy. Essentially just playing out the inevitable Hydro Cannon. Does secure the knockout. Quagsire with a huge energy lead. Just going to need to reach three mud bombs. Two to force to protect shields. And one to secure the knockout. To my surprise the opponent actually perhaps looked to call a bait. I don't really know what they're doing at this point. But Turbo saying if you're not going to use shields. I'm not either. And everyone's going to save two shields for next season. GG's. Uh oh. That's a yikes lead. Turbo going to instantly retreat into Skarmory. Skarmory actually tearing through this Sandslash with the Steel Wings. The opponent banks a boatload of energy and then send out Jellicent. Turbo goes for the Sky Attack first, not only wanting to not debuff his own defence, but one Brave Bird won't be lethal, so that is the correct play. As we haven't debuffed our own defence, even a Shadow Ball won't knock us out. Skarmory showing respectable Bolt. This time we are looking for that kill shot. Does the opponent respect the damage? Ooh, the opponent correctly shields up the Brave Bird and get a very nice Hex farm down. Out comes Dragonite. We see the instant no shield deployed, especially about Superpower. I don't really see the point in shielding Dragonite and Turbo agrees. The opponent actually tried the luck baiting with the Surf. Again, we're going to no shield. This time the opponent full sends a Shadow Ball and it's Quagsire versus the world. Come on Quagman, let's go buddy. The opponent farming up towards the Shadow Ball to Turbo, takes the initiative, fires off the Mud Bomb, securing the knockout and keeping two shields intact. The opponent thinking about what they want to send out back out. Come Sandslash, is this doable? The opponent opts for CMP, but that's better for us. They've got so much energy. If this goes unshielded and knocks out, this might be doable. Mud Bomb, no shot. That's got to be like an invisible HP. How is that thing still alive? Ice Punch gets us below half health. And the opponent was actually just toying with us as they had Polyrath. And that is not a winnable game. And we are going to concede the match. In the next battle, we see what else other than Gator. This thing is by far the most common one in the meta. The opponent farming up, looking to bait a potential Ice Beam Turbo, takes the initiative, fires off the Dragon Claw, obtaining early shield advantage. Turbo happy to match shields. The opponent fire off Hydro Cannon Bait, kill the poor defenseless cat in the process. Once again, the opponent looks to farm up to that Ice Beam, but end up playing to the CMP tie. They do not win. Trainer, do not play them games with the mighty Shadow Dragonite. We see the instant no shield deployed. Hydro Cannon doesn't knock out, but that's probably worse for us as the opponent does get a nice farm down. We're going to send out Quagsire to operate as the damage sponge and look for the mud shot farm down. Quagsire will leave below half health, but with residual energy, good to go. Out comes Cresselia. We see the pivot into Skarmory. Oh boy, out comes Skeledurge. Brave Bird is a very hard hitting move, but in the Ultra League, will not be picking up that one hit KO. So we're going to fire off the Sky Attack first. We need to keep Skarmory around for that Cresselia, but Skarmory is rapidly running out of HP. The opponent fire off the Disarming Voice Bait. Turbo going to knock this thing out with the Brave Bird. However, is our Switch Timer up in time to save Skarmory? You can see Turbo reaching for the Switch Timer. Unfortunately, it doesn't pop up. Moonblast secures the knockout, and Quagsire is again going to concede the match. GG to that opponent. Interestingly, next season switch timer is switching to 50 seconds, so perhaps we would have had a win con if this was played next week. Unfortunately, it was not, so we're going to move on to the next battle. Dragonite Jellicent. I've played this match about a lot as Shadow Dragonite, and I think like 90% of trainers bait. Turbo not taking any chances, pivots into Quag, and look at that. Of course, the opponent go for the serve. Out comes Superior, a very, very spicy pick in the Ultra League. I say spicy. It's ranked pretty high, although it needs to be maxed out all the way at level 50, and I personally have never ran into one, but it does sim pretty well. There's plenty of cheaper grass type options that are arguably better, stuff like Verizian, Venusaur, or even Trevenant. Although, my god, Skarmory, an absolute wall to this energy. The opponent fired off the Frenzy Plant. Nah, that isn't it. Opponent goes for an Aerial Ace. Nope, also not it, Trainer. Skarmory going to leave at 100 energy and start YOLOing some Brave Birds, or at least I hope so, at whatever wants to come back out. Today's featured Battle of Turbo has all the energy in the world. Out comes Talonflame. We actually go for the Sky Attack, meaning that Incinerate that we took will do less damage, as of course, if we would have fried off the Brave Bird, we would have triple debuffed our own defence. Back out comes Jellicent. Jellicent puts up that Protect Shield. Shielding up the incoming Dragon Claw, but Dragonite now will be looking for that one shield. Dragon Breath farm all the way down. Is this only a Surf? Turbo seems to think so. Turbo's counting doesn't let him down. The opponent fire off the Surf. Dragonite withstands the damage. Back out comes Talonflame. We're looking to get this thing out of it with a Dragon Claw. I don't quite think Dragon Claw 
will be lethal. Uh, but we've got the Sky Attack Bank and the Protect Shield to hide behind. So we just shield up whatever the opponent throws, which is the Flame Charge, Return Fire with the Sky Attack. And eventually we are going to emerge victorious. GG's. Heading into the next battle. We need our Shiny Shadow Dragonite into Gallade. A very cool pick from the opponent. They say switch into Shadow Gator. Also not a fan of Dragonite whatsoever. This opponent's team, very susceptible to fast move pressure, especially Dragon Breath. We've already forced one shield of the opponent. Looks like we're happy to match shields. We are going to outpace to the next Hydro Cannon, but Turbo makes a very, very nice catch. Timing it perfectly, allowing him to sneak the Mud Shot, and that is key, as that will allow us to outpace to the Mud Bomb, which will either knock out Gator or force the final shield. Of course, when you're running Gallade, you can't leave it with no shields. So the opponent smartly... Let go of Gator, send out Gallade and look to get ahead on energy. Mud Bomb does quite a lot of damage as Gallade cannot tank a hit for shit. A very nice over farm from the opponent. Leaf Blade, of course, easily going to knock out as it's double super effective, but they've now got a close combat banked. Gallade and Dragonite cut from the same cloth, neither can tank a charge move. So I agree with this player of sending out Skarmory to operate as the damage sponge. Ouch, that close combat hurt. Out comes Guzzlord. Turbo not messing around. Yolo in the Brave Bird does the opponent respect the damage. They do not. Huge damage from the Brave Bird. We then see the pivot into Dragonite. Dragonite going to shield up the incoming Dragon Claw. Dragon Breath farm down Guzzlord. Dragon Breath farm down Gallade. And we're going to take that game. Very, very nicely done. GG's. And that is going to wrap things up for set number two. Eight and two overall with a Skarmory Quagsire Core in Ultra League. Very, very good stuff. We've got one bonus set with a more conventional Dragonite double steel line. I did touch on Steelix earlier. I don't know why they gave it breaking swipe. I personally used Shadow Steelix for the first time this season and thought it was very balanced. I was using the same moveset that today's featured battler is using, Psychic Fang and Earthquake. It didn't need breaking swipe and it doesn't need breaking swipe. We get things off with a very high risk, high reward play. Catching a Dragon Claw onto Steelix. Switching a Steel type into a Fire type is madness. But it's the sort of play that I'd go for as well. The opponent sends out Venusaur and Steelix, as always, putting in so much work. We was able to make that catch as the opponent threw the Dragon Claw as soon as they got it. So sometimes it's good not to be that predictable. Not just spam charge moves as soon as you get them. We now re-enter this Dragonite Charizard matchup. We've got a huge energy lead and shield advantage. We force the opponent's final protect shield with the Dragon Claw. Turbo's going to go all in on his own Dragonite. Look for that Dragon Breath farm down. The opponent not wanting to get farmed down. Send out Giratina and again we make another very nice catch. Banking all of our energy in the process. The opponent evidently very frustrated that we've caught two charge moves. In this game going to say no thank you and concede the match in the next battle. Yikes, that's a nightmare lead. We say switch into Steelix, and it looks like we are falling victim of the algorithm. I'm just kidding, but this is pretty much hard counter city. A lot of people, when they get hard counter on the lead and hard counter on the switch, will just concede the match. However, it's always good to play it out, as you never know where a win con might arise. Let's see if Turbo manages to overcome this battle. Hopefully, Skarmory core breaks the remainder of the team. Or better yet, we could Hyper Beam Nine Tails. That'd be amazing. This opponent's even on an Aerial Ace, so everything's going wrong in this battle. If they're on Mega Horn and Drill Run, we would resist everything. Turbo, forced to throw. To keep Dragonite around, we pivot into Skarmory. Yeah, we aren't core breaking that. Sometimes you just get triple hard countered. It is what it is, and we're going to move on to the next one. Dragonite Skeletor Dirge. This matchup depends on shields, as we've got two to hide behind, very dominant for us. However, when shields are down, Skeledurge doesn't do bad, of course, as they've got access to Disarming Voice. The opponent just happy to sack the lead, so I imagine they've got a hard check for Dragonite. Uh, that isn't a hard check whatsoever. Polyrath not going to appreciate this Dragon Breath and Dragon Claw spam. The first one forced to protect shield Dragonite already at the second, which the opponent tanks. And again, Turbo, you savage, stop it. Makes the Ice Wing catch onto Steelix. I was having this discussion earlier with my Discord. I think there's three main factors that you need to master if you want to reach legend consistently in Pokemon Go. The timing of charge moves, energy management and knowledge of the count and Turbo's putting a clinic in all of them departments today. Out comes Venusaur. Oh boy, this poor Venusaur has no idea what's in store for it. We fire off the Psychic Fangs, the opponent opts to throw energy. Should we start the countdown now? How long is they top left? 
Three, two, one. Okay, the opponent is playing it out. However, when they see this damage, please top left. Trainer is not happening. Frenzy Plant simply doesn't get the job done. The opponent finally recognizes this game's over and they are going to concede the match. Heading into the next battle. Another fairy lead. Last time we were hard countered here, there and everywhere. However, Gliscor is not bad for Steelix. This is a very, very bait dependent matchup. The opponent is very reliant on landing that Earthquake. Charge move incoming turbo. Gonna call the Earthquake here. The opponent baits with the Night Slash and we don't see a boost. The opponent's kind of forced to shield here as well. If they don't, Steelix is gonna do what Steelix does best and just cheese its way through this matchup. The opponent now only has one chance to throw the Earthquake. Again, they go for the bait. I don't really understand that as they're only going to reach one further Night Slash. But it is what it is. We have flipped that god-awful alignment. But we are now down two Protect Shields. Back out comes Gramble. We farm to the Earthquake bait with the Psychic Fangs. And the opponent shows huge Gahonas calling the bait. Undeterred. Turbo goes straight for the next Psychic Fangs. I like this play from the opponent. As we fought so hard for Switch, logically... We've got a decent answer for Grumble in the back. The opponent recognises that and looking to two shield whatever's in the back. Out comes Alola Muck. Skarmory going to be double resisting these poison jabs. Sky attack number one forces a protect shield. As this Muck switch lock, I think I personally would switch out instantly here, just trying to get some use out of Dragonite. But it looks like Turbo is going to stay in. Look to fire off. One further Sky attack, but the opponent is obliged to shield. And then eventually we do see the pivot into Dragonite. Dragonite will survive any one move, as long as they're not on something random like Gunk Shot. No trash cans are going to be thrown today. Dragonite absorbs the Dark Pulse, returns fire with the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw is going to knock out. The opponent is going to get the Tap Tap, Charm Down, Farm Down. But likewise, we're going to get the Tap Tap, Steel Wing, Farm Down and take that game. GG's. In the next battle, we see a familiar lead. I can already smell a Surf Bait incoming. Let's see if we look to catch it on Steelix. With this variation of the team, Steelix will take super effective from water, but it is insanely thick. It looks like Turbo actually happy just to stay in this matchup, at least for now. Holy cow, good job. I'm not the battler today, as that Shadow Ball would have picked up that one hit KO. The opponent only reached the departing surf, which we are going to tank and commit to the Dragon Breath farm down. You can see we're spamming the switch, as of course we are looking to bait out a potential fire type that Skarmory doesn't want to see. And that's exactly what we've done as out comes Skeledurge. The opponent fires off the Shadow Ball. Steelix withstands the damage. Unfortunately, we're going to fall short of the Earthquake. However, the opponent evidently doesn't know the count and doing their best to protect Shield. Perhaps Shield in fearful of a crunch, as that is something we've got access to. Dragonite re-enters the battlefield, goes straight for the Dragon Claw. Dragon Claw goes on Shielding and does a lot of damage with a debuff defence. It looks like we're going to put all our hopes and dreams on the back of Skarmory, hoping it can clean up. What is that third Pokemon? Out comes Guzzlord. We've already seen that Brave Bird near one shots from here. So I think the correct play is no shield the first move. In case they get the debuff, of course they get the debuff. Why wouldn't they? And just go straight Brave Bird. Turbo recognising baiting is his lose con. Fires off the first Brave Bird, forcing the Protect Shield. We've now received the energy for the next Brave Bird. We can just shield this move up. Tap the Brave Bird and that is going to be all she wrote with Skarmory. Closing out today's video in style. GG's and thanks for playing. And that is going to wrap things up for today's video. Quagsire Skarmory Core still putting in work in Ultra League. Unfortunately, both them Pokemon are receiving nerfs. Skarmory is now going to be almost unplayable. I'm quite happy to be honest as Skarmory is a very RPS pick in the Great League. However, anyone that's made the investment at Ultra League, it is brutal. That is one expensive pick, especially if you've made the Shadow variant. So if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button if you're new. Consider subscribing if you'd like your battles featured on my channel. A link to my battle submission form is down below. And as always, a huge thank you to everyone for watching. And I'll see you all in the next one.